Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a realistic rib trim in Clo. Uh, I actually got this from another video that I'll share in the description. Um, it's just that some of my students thought it went a little fast and they had some questions. So I'm gonna try to redo it at a bit of a slower pace and try to explain things a little, um, a little bit extra because this might be your first time trying to do this. So, um, okay. So rib trim. So to get started, you do have to find artwork on the internet that looks like rib fabric, or maybe you take a picture of some rib fabric. Um, so I have one I can share with you guys also in the description. Um, let me show you. I'm going to open it up. Click, click. Okay, here we go. So here, I kind of just made it a little bit smaller. This is the original one from the um, video. And it's not all the way in repeat. You can see I kind of was playing with the repeat. I didn't quite finish it. You can slightly see the line. I have other videos if you want to learn how to um, create repeat tiles in Photoshop. I was a little bit lazy with this one. But anyways, you can have this one. I think it'll get us by for this demonstration. But here, you know, I have a photograph of a close-up of a rib trim. So this is what I'm going to use. Um, okay, so the first step is, is to actually put this in your fabric. Now, I'm using a knit fabric here. I think I only want the trim on this bottom panel. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this fabric, and I'm going to say copy. Okay. And then this, um, I'm going to change the name to rib. Okay. And then I'll select this pattern piece, and then I'll click drag and drop it. Okay, so now only that pattern piece is the rib. And to double check, I can select my pattern piece, and in the property editor, um, look for some information. Let's see here. Fabric. Yeah, it looks like from drop down, it's, it's the rib and not the knit like the rest of the garment. So all the changes I'm going to make to the rib fabric, you'll only see in this one pattern piece. Now, maybe it's a little sloppy that I started with this random knit one here instead of from the library, just like a, maybe it's better to start with like the default fabric. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> So to get started, um, I need to really add that photograph of um, the rib I found. So I guess I don't really need the information information. Um, let's see what else. Anything here that I need? I'm going to scroll down. Oh, I think I missed something. Um, oh, oh, here we go. Okay, so under material, under the basic parameters, there is texture. So this is kind of a weird 3D thing, is that they use the word texture when me as a designer, I wanna use the word print or artwork. Um, so here the texture, it's, I think it's just white or nothing's there, I'm not sure, whatever's on this knit one. Um, but we need to change ours to that swatch I just downloaded. So if you click this little white box one time, um, I think it also works if you click these little four boxes too. You have to go to your folder, wherever you saved it. I think mine's on my desktop. And then I made a folder called Rip Trim. And there it is. It's a JPEG. I clicked it once. I can say open. Probably could have double clicked it. Okay, so now I put my artwork on this fabric, almost like it was going to be printed on it. So this is fine, but the problem is it's still going to look really flat and it's not gonna look like it's in 3D, like we're not gonna see um, part of the art artwork pop out. It's just like it's printed still on a flat fabric. Um, so the trick is to make what they call a displacement map, and then that will make like part of the knit kind of pop out and protrude, and then the other rows like do the opposite and go backwards, you know, so it'll actually have like a 3D effect. So that's what we want to do. So I've started with just putting in the artwork there. My artwork is black and white. Um, and okay, so then our next step is we need a displacement map. So we'll have to make one ourselves in Photoshop. Okay, so you'll need Photoshop for this. Um, I have my artwork actually already open in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm where whatever part of my artwork that I want it to like protrude out and like pop out like 3D, um, I want that to be a white space. So white is gonna move forward in the computer coding 
language. And then black is going to make it feel far away. Okay. So this is, I don't know, this is like 3D programming stuff that we're dealing with. Um, the computer will just know, okay, anything that's black, set backwards and anything that's white bring forward in the 3D software program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color, you know, part of it white, all these like rows white, so it'll be forward. And now in Photoshop, you know how to use Photoshop? You're like, oh, it's probably so easy. But if you don't, you know, there's lots of different ways. Like maybe you get just like a paintbrush and paint the rows white and paint the other ones black. Um, but I'll show you the trick that was shown in the original video. So she just did a selection tool. Okay. And you can select a little spot right here. And then she went over, so you have to have your layers window open. If it's not open, go to window. It's all alphabetical. Look for it. Um, get that open. Make sure, you know, you only have one layer. And there's this little circle down at the bottom. Um, you can click that. And this is, um, it, you can fill what is selected with a solid color. So that's what we want to do. So I'll click that. Um, and then you can choose white. Okay, I just clicked it all the way up. It's like FFFFF is like the little number, I guess. Okay, so there you go. Um, I think what she did, she like copied and pasted it. You could do that, or maybe I can just click and drag and, I mean, maybe I should copy and paste it so it's exactly the same size. Maybe that's a good idea. Um, in Photoshop, there's more than one way to do stuff. So maybe, let's see here, I can, if I hold Option, I can just click and drag it out with my mouse. I'm holding the option button. I'm also holding shift so it doesn't go anywhere crazy. I'm gonna bring out another one, try to place it in the right spot. Okay, cool. Then I'm gonna go back to layer one and I'm gonna add, oops, I lost one, didn't I? What did I do? Here, let me try that again. Let's go back up to this guy. There we go. Okay, let me go of the mouse and then I let go. Sometimes I hit my keyboard first and before the mouse and then it didn't copy like I wanted it to. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and select layer one, back and selecting that layer. And what I wanna do, I want the rest to all be black, right? So I'm basically gonna make a new layer underneath all of my white ones and make it black. So again, I can use this tool again, but you'll notice when I did the white, I selected a little rectangle. This time, nothing is selected. So everything should turn black on this layer. So I'm going to click that guy. I'll do solid color. And I decide I'm going to choose black. Okay, so now we have a full layer that's black. Uh, my original layer is still there. It doesn't really matter. I definitely don't really need my original layer at this point because I'm trying to make a displacement map, which is just like a black and white image. Um, so, okay. Let's see here. Um, I want to make sure I'm not skipping a step. I know the next step would be to add a blur. I'm trying to remember if I need to add the blur. Let's see here. Yeah, maybe. Okay. So I think what I'll do is, um, before I add my blur, I'm gonna flatten all of my layers here. So maybe I'll hide my bottom one and then to merge all these other ones, I can go up to layer and just say merge visible. Okay, so now on that layer, I need to make it blurry so that this really blends because it'll look kind of weird if it's just like a sharp pop up and pop back, it'll look kind of funky. So if it's blurred, then it's like a smooth transition. So there's blur tools in Photoshop. There's probably more than one way to do it. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna do filter, and then we're gonna look for blur, and then we're gonna look for Gaussian blur. And kind of eyeball it. I don't think that's gonna be enough. I'm gonna make it blur a little bit more. Okay, maybe more. Ooh, that might be too, I don't, I don't know really. You can kind of play around with it. Let's try this. This hopefully doesn't blur too much. I think this will be good. So we'll say, okay, cool. So now hopefully our black is all lined up on the parts that we want to go in and the white is all lined up on the parts that we want to go out. So um, I'm gonna turn on the bottom layer and then you can kind of just make this opaque for a little bit just to kind of double check that everything's in the right spot, right? So the white stuff is gonna pop up and be 3D, like forward. And the black stuff's gonna go backwards. That's our 
goal. Okay, so I'm bringing back the opacity to 100. I actually don't even need this bottom layer, to be honest with you, you can get rid of it. And I'm gonna export this as a JPEG. So or I wonder if it'll let me do save as as JPEG, let's try. Okay, save as, let's call this um, our map, our displacement map. Okay. Um, don't forget where you saved it. I did start a little rib folder, so I should probably keep it in there. There it is. Great. Okay. Ooh, it was a PNG. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me try that again. File. Might be okay as a PNG, but in the video she did a JPEG, so I'm trying to follow the video as best as I can. Um, here we are. Format. JPEG. Rib. And then let's make sure we find our rib folder. Okay. And we're going to call it rib displace. Uh, then it's all that displacement map. Okay. I'm going to say, okay. Okay, we have the displacement map. Okay, so we made it in Photoshop. Now we're going to go back to Clo. And let's see here. Okay, we are going to, what do we need to do? Da, 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 da. Um, we have our texture, that's good. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Now, this normal map came with the other fabric that I copied, so I actually think I should delete it. So I'm just gonna hit this little trash can to get rid of that. We're just not gonna have a normal map, so we're gonna get rid of that guy. Um, displacement map, there's nothing there right now, so I'll click these four little dots, or squares, whatever they are. And here we go. So it looks like you can do PNG or JPEG since they're both available, but I'll just stick with JPEG to kind of follow and be true to the video. Okay, now, so we have the displacement map as well. Now, there's a couple settings you're supposed to um, use in Clo, so I want to make sure I read those correctly. Um, it says change our partial distance amount to one. Okay, so here's our amount. I believe it, the, on her video, it defaulted to three. Ours, I don't know why ours is at zero, so we'll change it to one. And then the particle distance, because this is like a small JPEG, um, it's not a huge file. She also recommended changing that to one so that it has like a higher resolution, basically. And I think those are the only two things that she changed um, in the settings. And that's really it. So then the last step is, is to change the um, size of it. So she did the transformation by changing the, you know, the percentage here. And she typed in a number. Um, I'm kind of a visual person. I really like changing it with this tool right here. To change the fabric, you can select your pattern piece. And then you can click and drag, and this will change um, the texture artwork and the displacement map at the same time. So you can really figure out the right texture. So let's see if that did actually work. Um, I believe it did. It should have. So um, just the other way, I guess maybe if you want all the fabric the same, I mean, maybe maybe it is better to do it not with that because that just changed it only on particular pattern pieces. But, um, but you can change the transformation. Oh, no, it did do it. Look, it's 34%. Yeah, change it on all the fabric. Great. So that's 34% is um, the displacement map. So did the texture artwork that also changed to 34%. So it's important that our texture print artwork of that photo of the rib is the same exact scale as that displacement map we made because we're really trying to get those black and white lines to line up. It would be a disaster if one was way bigger than the other because then our black and white lines wouldn't line up anymore. Okay, so now we just gotta figure out if this even worked, <laughs> right? So let's go ahead and open up our render window. Maybe I'll simulate first, see if that's helpful at all. Okay, I hit the space bar. I'm gonna hit the space bar again to get out of simulation mode. And let's go up to render and see what this looks like. I'll click here one time. And it's thinking about it might be a good idea to close Illustrator and Photoshop and my calendar and all these other programs I've opened to get my computer to run a little faster. Cool, I think it did work. Yeah. So to me, it looks more 3D here. Scrolling in a little bit. 
than just like a flat print. Yeah, it just has like more texture to it basically, or just pops out a little bit more instead of it being like just a flat like print. So anyways, that's how you make the displacement map. Um, this is just a more detailed video, um, but watch the other video too. She even goes into a couple other techniques as well and reach out if you guys have any questions.